Is Tucson really in a water crisis? Other than being told so in scary headlines, how would we know if we were approaching water shortages? Where does Tucson's water come from? And most importantly, what can we do to help conserve water to ensure that Tucson continues to flourish well into the future? Hey everyone, it's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona, and today we are talking all about Tucson's water and how it impacts our city's future. First, we need to start out by understanding the three major sources that we as Tucsonans get our water from. But first, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to follow along with Tucson News and learn more about things to do and see and know about this city, my hometown. And when you're ready to buy or sell a Tucson home, you know how to find me. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel. And please check out other videos on this channel after this one. We have over 100 videos out about Tucson and real estate on the channel. When we think about where our water comes from here in Tucson, the first thing that may come to mind is storm water. Our winter showers and spectacular monsoon rains are something we all look forward to living here in the Sonoran Desert. This water temporarily creates streams and fills up our washes, but it doesn't last for long. Our rain doesn't collect in any reservoirs and we don't have any streams or rivers that run year round. This means we don't have any local surface water to draw from like other places do. We do, however, heavily rely on these rains to water our outdoor plants and make Tucson greener. We might think that the rain also helps replenish the aquifer in the Tucson Valley. Interestingly enough, groundwater in our aquifer is not considered a renewable resource. Why? Because aquifers develop over geologic time and they don't recharge at a fast enough pace to be considered renewable based on a human time scale. So this means that our rainwater, although very important, is not a significant contributor to the water that everyday Tucsonans use for their households. We can help decrease the dependence of our main sources of water in Tucson through water harvesting and watershed management techniques that I'll talk about extensively in another video. So make sure you're subscribing to this channel to follow along with all of that information. We also get our water from remediated and recycled water sources. Remediated water is water that has been treated to specifically high standards and is used primarily for irrigation. Gray water is water from our homes in the form of sink water, bath water, dishwasher water, etc., and is also used for irrigation and other non-potable uses. Tucson's main source of water has historically been drawn from the underground aquifer until the 2000s when Tucson's main source of water was allocated to what is considered a renewable resource. That renewable resource being the Colorado River. The Central Arizona Project, or CAP for short, brings water to Tucson through a series of canals from the Colorado River. The water is used to charge the groundwater. Then it's pumped back up through wells to be used for the needs of Tucson residents, to put it simply. This CAP water is the source of our water crisis claims. Lake Mead, which is the lake that butts up against the Hoover Dam, is at a critical level, reaching 29% capacity, which is the lowest level on record. It's so low that the Tucson City Council voted to give back about a third of our allocation to help restore Lake Mead. Efforts from California and Nevada, along with Arizona, have joined what is called the 500 Plus Plan. The 500 Plus Plan is a multi-state plan to conserve 500,000 acre feet of water or more each year in order to help replenish Lake Mead. An acre foot is the amount of water that would cover one acre of land in one foot of water. So do these low levels of water in Lake Mead mean that we are in a crisis? Well, a crisis is a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. And it can be difficult to determine whether or not we are in such a state, since after all, people's perceptions determine what a crisis may be. Some states or cities may have different solutions or challenges when it comes to restricted water use. So let's look closer at Tucson. With an imminent threat of the declaration of a water shortage at Lake Mead, couple
filled with 20 years of drought in Arizona. Things might be looking pretty bleak when it comes to water. However, Tucson looks to be a bit ahead compared to other cities in water preparedness. Tucson's allocation of Colorado River water is 144,000 acre feet per year. But get this, Tucson only uses 90 to 100,000 acre feet for consumption. This means that Tucson has been effectively banking up to one half of its water use in the aquifer each year. This gives Tucson an additional buffer if more restrictions are put in place from Lake Mead. Even with Tucson giving up a percentage of its CAP water, we can still sustain our current usage. But what if the droughts continue? Also, how are we going to manage the increasing population and the increasing water demand that goes along with it? All things considered, Tucsonans have been very proactive in decreasing water usage over the years. Since the 1970s, Tucsonans have decreased water usage by about 1-2% to a year, and we actually use quite a bit less water than Arizona on average, according to the most recent statistics. What are people in Tucson doing to conserve water? Well, people in Tucson have embraced the natural desert landscape using watering techniques such as xeriscaping. Xeriscaping uses natural desert plants that are drought resistant, which means they need little to no watering to survive. This saves us time, water, and money. It's also a good idea to have someone check your home for underground leaks. Old underground pipes under your home or your yard may be a source of water waste. Many people are quitting lawn care altogether. Watering your lawn uses a lot of water if you want to keep it looking in tip-top shape. And over the years, water's become much more expensive, so transitioning from a grass lawn to an alternative can save you time and money. Imagine no more weed whacking and mowing the lawn, not to mention lower water bills. There are many options when it comes to replacing your lawn. First, I already mentioned xeriscaping, but many people choose to replace their lawns with rock work and crushed rock to prevent the ground from getting muddy and prevent erosion when the monsoons hit. Also, more and more Tucsonans have chosen to install artificial turf if they still want that grass look and feel. Flagstone or decorative cement is another low maintenance option for Tucson yards as well. Upgrading to more water efficient dishwashers or toilets and taking shorter showers instead of baths and the list goes on and on. Please comment below if you have any additional water saving tips. As for Tucson being in the middle of a water crisis, it's hard to say. We've been banking water in the aquifer for some time. Even with cutting back the amount we withdraw from the Colorado River, we have enough to supply Tucson with water based on the current numbers. Maybe the drought will worsen. Maybe we will have some great Lake Mead replenishment. Maybe we as Tucsonans doing our part to reduce our water usage can make a big impact as well. All that I can say for sure is that nobody can predict the future. If we can all do our part, we can help Tucson thrive for many years to come. I hope you've learned a little bit about where Tucson gets its water, our current state of resources, and what we can do as residents to help conserve this very important resource. As always, if you're ready to buy or sell a home here in Tucson, give me a call. I'd love to help you out. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel. And there are tons of other videos on the channel about things to do and see and know about this city, my hometown. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out the door. I always appreciate you hanging out with me and I will see you in the next Tucson video.